previously on Project IGI. In the first hour travel, out in the rain and snow, in the rain and snow. I didn't have no fever, and even no place to go. But I'm a dead one, and I'm a dead one, and I'm a dead one. David, are you okay? Yeah. Let me call Tanya. I know. I've got a fix on both you and the map computer. The distress beacon has kicked in. You're in a forward base of a rapid reaction force. That means... Recognized infantry. Supporting armor. Integrated aerial support. I haven't forgotten that much. Sorry. Look, the truck is close to the infantry barracks. The map computer is broadcasting from a workshop in a repair yard that is one kilometer away. Here are your orders. Get out of there, David, and find the repair yard. Get yourself to the workshop and retrieve the map computer. I've already sourced the evac. Move it, soldier. Hello, and welcome back to a very chilly edition of Project IGI in the back of this truck, but before we get out, let's have a look and see what weapons we have. We've got a Desert Eagle, and uh, some grenades, useful, and a Dragonov. Having a peek out, we can see we've got some security cameras and such. That's going to cause a bit of a problem because we still don't have the map computer, so we can't readily see where everything is. We'll go over all of these objectives in due course, but for the moment, all we really want to do is get out of this encampment that we're currently inside. And right off the bat, here is the first problem. We've got a watchtower up there with a guy just sniping at us. First time you play the level, you'll probably just blindly wander out and kid yourself shot and have no idea where it's coming from. It's a little irritating that the first enemy of the level is one that you have to kind of know in advance where he is in order to take him out without getting hit. Personally, I think the level would have been a lot better off without this one particular guy. There are a few snipers around the level, but this one is just in the wrong place. He needed to be somewhere else where he doesn't have an immediate beat on you as soon as you start. This encampment is split up into three areas. We've got a barracks area over there. We've got a two-story building over in the other side. And over here is just a continuation of the part we're currently in. It's just kind of a parking area with not really much going on. The main problem of this area are these two cameras. One of them is constantly rotating back and forwards and the other one is in a fixed position looking at one of the cameras. So you have to be very careful with the order that you destroy them in. Once those are done, we can focus more on getting rid of these. We wait for this camera to be looking away and quickly shoot the one which is pointing at it. Then we can nip back and destroy that one. Okay, job done. As an example of doing it wrong, if we shoot the stationary camera at the wrong time, the rotating one will pick that up and set off the alarm. That'll cause some guys to sort of meander about in the two-story building and come flooding out of the barracks area. Another option is that we can shoot the petrol tankers and actually destroy them that way. Unfortunately, there seems to be a bit of a delay in destroying the cameras. When you blow up the tanker, it destroys the camera next to that, but there's a little bit of a period before the stationary camera gets destroyed. And I guess in that small delay, it has enough of a reaction time to set off the alarm. Aina tells us that the main gates are controlled by the two-story building. That's because the main gates are closed and we can't just waltz out. We're going to have to do some work before we can do that. Still some cameras left, we've got this one over here, we'll take it out on the way, it's really not much of a problem. We've got a water tower but there's nothing at the top and we've no reason to go up there. We've got some tankers and things in behind this fenced area which we can't access. Since we're out in the open a little bit we can take a look at the horizon. We can see that we've got another watch tower over there with a guy inside, we'll not kill him yet, we'll let him live for the moment. We can actually completely ignore this fenced off barracks area over here. But for the sake of this I'll just actually go and have an explore, first we'll stop off in this garage. Got nothing inside and the back of the truck is empty. Oh well. Off to the barracks itself we've got um appears to be a one-way gate. We open it from this side, but we, we we don't have a switch on the other side, which is a little strange. First barracks has nothing inside, and second's got some guys. Stop it!
unfortunately, since we've triggered them. A few other guys will spawn after, but it's really not that much of a concern. Only one of the warehouses happens to have anything inside, and it's an absolute fuck ton of grenades. For once I'll actually get some use out of them, uh, but that'll be coming up very shortly. But other than that, we really don't need this many. This is just being silly. Stop. interesting about the guys that we're killing is that they're just regular guys that are respawning. They're not the Spesnaz guys who spawn when the alarm comes off, so it's just a little strange that they would have those guys keep respawning when really you, you, it's not often that you're actually going to go into this particular area. But we're done with that, let's actually get on with the task at hand. We've got a little checkpoint here with a computer for disabling the security cameras. We'll not bother with that, I think we've destroyed all but one, so we'll just ignore it and move on. two-story area is blocked off by this gate, so we'll just open that. If you're paying attention, you can see there's a little machine gun in the balcony up there. Let's see what happens if we just wander around to the entrance without really any regard. Yes, we've got a security camera, we've got a machine gun up top, and a shotgunner in the doorway. Lovely. If we go around the back of the building instead, we can see that we're in really not much of a better position. So what do we do? Well, as soon as we go through the gate, the guards come out from the top onto the balcony and actually man those two machine guns that are there. So we just throw a grenade. Oh, uh... Ignore that! Let's try it again. Much better. But it's also taking care of the guy inside the building as well. The splash damage seems to go through walls, which is handy. Before we go inside, if we take a walk over here, we've got another balcony on the other side and the guy just standing there. We can just kill him now and get it out of the way. So off we go inside. Got ourselves a shotgun. And I got a kill. This room is empty. The shower room has some actual showers in them this time. And while we wait for the lift, let's have a joke. A man went to the zoo. All he had on display was a dog. It was a shit zoo. We're left with two fellas upstairs. They are pretty easy to be gotten rid of, and when we're done, all we really need to be doing is picking up ammo. We may need that at some point. And then hit this switch. You can see the gate we're supposed to get through out the window. So if we hit the switch, we can open that and we'll be ready to go. Of course, when we actually go out the gate, we'll be in full view of this guy in the sniper tower. So we'll take care of him in advance. This door leads us to the balcony where the other chap was hanging out. If you step out here and he's still alive, he'll get behind the machine gun, but he can't actually turn it around to shoot at you. So he'll just stand there until you shoot him in the face. Done with that, so let's get down the lift and get out of here. Oh, oh, we've got another floor. This room has just a bunch of crates, there's nothing hidden or interesting going on. And this room has a guy! Once we kill him, we've got nothing else in the room except for this alarm. This is actually pretty useful if you manage to fuck up and get caught and set off the alarm. If you try to flip the gate switch while the alarm is on, Anya will tell you that you can't do that until the alarm has been switched off. So obviously you'll just go down the lift into the basement, hit that switch and then you can go back up, hit the gate switch and you'll be free to go. Let's 
just speed up all of this crap and get us out the front gate. Hooray! What happens if you didn't kill the guy on the balcony? Well, not much. Because he's facing in the opposite direction by default, he won't see you. <sighs> Ten minutes in and we finally finished the first of the six objectives that we have to do. <sighs> Luckily the next ones don't take quite as long, so let's, um, let's figure out where we're going to go. We have no landmarks, we've just got those two watchtowers, so let's... Let's go for this one. We can at least pick up some dragon of ammo while we're there. On top of this ridge, we can see that we've got a third watchtower off in the distance. We'll probably have to go in one of those two directions. From the watchtower, we've got a pretty wide view. If we look at the exit gate from the base, there's a path leading from there, and if we look closely, there's actually some structures. So it looks like we're going to be heading that way. We. But before we go any further, I'm going to show you the alternative way to get out of the first base. Picking up just after we killed a sniper, we take a wander off in this direction. Nip under the camera. And all the way over here to behind these containers. Then on top of the box. At first it seems that you can't make it over the fence over here. For some reason this left section makes things very difficult for you. But if you jump over the right one, you are over the wall and away. Take that and stick it up your arse, 10 minute fucking objective. And if only if it was that easy. Jumping over the fence this way actually has a consequence. If we follow the path all the way down to the what appears to be the next area, an APC is spawned. And this normally isn't here, um, if you don't jump the fence it doesn't appear, but since we have, it's gonna chase us around. Well, not really. All it's actually going to do is make its way up to the first base and then just start doing a patrol all the way around. It's extremely easy to avoid. All you have to do is run up one of the ridges and it just won't know that you're there. If we reposition ourselves back to the first watchtower again. We can thrill at the excitement of a patrolling APC. Round it, round it goes. But we're not done with the first base yet. We've still got more to actually show off. Rather than jumping over the fence, let's jump on top of it. That way we can actually walk along it all the way around the base. We'll follow it back along this direction. You can see that it's not obstructed in any way. We end up being able to go all the way around. Our first stop on the tour is this little fence section here. Now, normally you can't get inside. There's a gate at the front of the fence, but it doesn't actually open. But uh, we can jump inside and just sort of poke around. There's no real easy way to get out. I'm, you can see I'm trying to jump on top of this little refueling shed type thing. But um, I can't make it on top. So there's uh, at least one surefire way to get out. <laughs> Two broken ankles later and off we go. Continuing from where we left off, let's take a wander around to the barracks area. Because we took the quick way out, no one's actually been killed yet. So we just need to pop that guy and get the camera too. And once we jump down, we find we're in a bit of a fix. We can't open the gate itself and we can't reach the switch to unlock it, so what do we do? Well, that question actually gets solved for us. One of the cameras end up actually seeing us and sets off the alarm, so a cunning plan begins to brew. I'll just hide in behind this warehouse and wait for a bit. There we go, the fools have opened it for me. <laughs> I am victorious. No, no, shit, no. No, this wasn't in my plan. Fuck off, leave me be. This time we'll go in the direction of the two-story building. 
Rather than opening the fence, we can just drop down and wander in that way. Speed up this whole section of getting in. You can see how annoying this shotgun guy in the bottom floor can be. Get our way up to the top, and we have those two guys to kill, but we've also got some trouble with the, um, the two other guys outside the window. get ourselves in a very awkward position, we'll get blasted that way. Let's try that again. Take out those two guys, we'll ignore the balcony for the moment and we'll go out to the other balcony around the back. This is something that you could do normally during the, the regular run of play. If we get on the outside of the fence, take a good run up, we can jump over that and just cut out the whole backtracking portion and just go out the gate that way. Of course, if you can do this jump, why not just jump on top of the wall and go over the fence anyway? So, yeah, it doesn't really help all that much, it's just a, a thing to point out. pointing out is that if you do make it up to the second floor and start killing people, if you shoot the two guys out in the balcony, one of the cameras is bound to see them and just set off the alarm. This is also a very good reason to not snipe them from the starting position, just to make sure that the um, alarms don't get set off. And of course from this balcony you can do pretty much the same thing and take a running jump and leap over that. You can make it over the wall, but for this we'll just land on it. Of course it would be good if I could have made this jump too, but I'm a spy so I didn't do it. Something else to point out is that unlike the other gate over the barracks area, this one you can open. You can activate the control path from the other side of the wall and the gate will open. we go back to the machine gun balcony, we can uh, use the guns and uh, tear up some shit. Of course it doesn't help when the AI have shotguns that act like sniper rifles and shoot you up from a distance. God, they're just gonna keep on coming, aren't they? And that alarm is getting a bit annoying. So we might as well go out with a bang. Okay, that's enough of the first piece. Let's actually get on with the level, shall we? I'm gonna run up this ridge and see if we can get a better look at the buildings that we saw earlier. take a look we see we've got quite a sizable base to contend with. We've got um, sort of an annex building over here. We've got the, the main compound and then another sort of garage area over there. But before we go any further, let's go up to the watchtower and see if we can pick up that sniper ammo. On top of that, we can get another angle on the base and we can try and figure out how we're going to approach this. And right off the bat, we've got some scaffolding over here. I think that's probably the way that we're going to get in. It leads up to the top of the garages and then I guess we can get off from there. There are two main ways into the base, that's one of them. The second one I'll deal with a little bit later on. But for the moment, we'll just have a look around the base and see if we can just at least point out some things to be aware of. 
One thing we can do is try to take out some of the guys in advance. The first guy I shot behind the bunker structure, he's pretty much okay. There's not really any problem of killing him. The guy on top of the central tower is, um, it kind of depends where you shoot him from, but this time I managed to get away with it. The exception is that one guy who was inside the bunker, which you may have just seen. He is not someone you want to kill. We'll get the reason why later on, but it's uh, managed to spook all the rest of the guards, but they've come out and taken up their posts. Got a guy in the machine gun up top and two down below. And if we kill them, they'll eventually just respawn anyway. So it's, uh, it makes things very difficult if we make anyone aware of our presence. So we really have to take this particular base very, very quietly. We. If we have a look at the objectives, we can see that we're supposed to get inside the tank and maintenance yard and that we need to get into the ammo building. That is the case. Um, the intro had a mistake in that it said we had to get into the uh, tank workshop where the uh, our map computer is being held. That is in fact not the case. In fact, the original subtitles for the intro before I replaced them actually referred to things correctly in saying that we had to go into the ammo building. It was only just in actually matching up with what Anya was saying that the discrepancy just kind of persists, unfortunately. Anya popped up in the comms to tell us what we're supposed to do and it is actually correct. We get into the ammo building and the map computer's in the basement of that. But for now, we're going to try and get into the garage and we're going to go in through a skylight. There are a couple of ways in. I picked the th probably the worst way. You damage yourself when you jump from that height. But you can uh, get in this window and drop them down on this sort of stuff, whatever this thing does. And there's also another way down, the outside of the building, down this plank of wood. Or you could just drop off the roof onto this handy container. Ah, you know, whatever floats your boat. Inside the guard itself, we got some workshoppy things around, and we got an APC, but we're not gonna fuck with that. Let's just open the gate and get out. And we're gonna avoid the middle of the compound. We'll just follow the fence along and get ourselves around the other side of the bunker. In this particular run, I hadn't sniped a guy who's patrolling around here, so I know in advance to be expecting him. Further on down past the end of the bunker is a burnt out husk of an APC for no particular reason. And there's another guy patrolling there, but we won't have to worry about him for the moment, so we'll just head back to the doorway into the back of this bunker. Got a lock, so we'll pop that open. And inside we've got a, an odd situation. We've got a camera and a guy looking down the ladder, which is uh, an interesting sort of little quirk for him. What you're really supposed to do is to shoot the camera first and then shoot the guy. But you can see here that I took some damage. In the actual run, I kind of flew by the seat of my pants and I just randomly shot at the guy first. Somehow that didn't set off the camera. It must The guy must have died at just a, a certain angle where it doesn't pick him up. But we've got enough time to destroy the camera. We've pretty much got away okay. Anya chimed in to tell us that she can't extract us until we disable the local air defences. It's a little bit early to be telling us that, but we'll get to that eventually. Stop there! Into the ammo storage, we've got a couple of guys, not really much of a problem. Well, oh, said, not really much of a problem. Just make sure that there's no one else hiding around. seem to be okay so let's uh let's see what we've got we've got two rooms up here inside this one we've got the map computer we'll not pick that up yet we'll come back to that in a moment inside this room we've got a law which is handy and some sort of homing beacon thing we'll end up using that later on to take out the air defenses so we'll grab it now and it tells us that we need to pick up the map computer have a look y yes anya i heard you pick up the map computer yes Stop telling me to pick up the map computer. Stop. Anya, stop it. Shut up. You, you may have guessed that there's a, there's a bug. If you pick up the beacon first, Anya will tell you to pick up the map computer over and over and over again. And she won't stop until we do. Well, that's the ammunition bunker all done with. 
managed to come out with not really all that much. We got some law rockets, but not really anything of any real value. We got the map computer and the homing beacon, so there's not really much reason to stick around. We can actually get out of here right now if we wanted to. But before we do that, we've got a bit of a conversation going on over the comms. It goes on for quite a bit, so I'll try to paraphrase it. Anya's happy that they're back in contact, even though they've been in contact all the time anyway. Anya lets on that she's got a surprise for David. David wants a bath, and uh, no, he's not going to get one. She says instead that a chopper is indeed on the way, and that we can also use the homing beacon to actually take out the SAM defences. Funny that. What she's going to do somehow is try to reroute one of the jets of the, um, I guess the Estonian army, I'm not sure, uh, to um, attack that particular target and then say, oh, it was a training accident. Or maybe it's the Russian army. I have no idea. I think we were in Russian airspace when we crashed, but I don't know where we are. And I, I have no idea. I'm not sure how that works. Um, I guess it's a way to attack the SAM defences without setting them off and uh, attacking the jet or anything like that. But once we've done that, we have to then go to a radar tower and then we have to disable the radar. And after that, the chopper can land and we can get out. Oh, and David makes a really bad quip, which isn't really all that funny. And back to the game at hand, we've pretty much done all we need to. We took out that guy we saw patrolling around earlier on. He almost made it to the switch. I don't know if you saw the alarm button, but uh, we got very close there. All we have to do now is grind this fence and then leg it out the front entrance. We've already taken out the guy in the bunker, so we're home free. But we're not done yet. Um, during my entire time of playing this game, I had no idea that there was another way to do things. I thought the way that I've just done it, which is climbing over the back and getting through that way, was the only real way to do it. Because any time I tried to deviate, I always got caught and some very bad things happened. So I'm going to show you the other way to do things. I'm not going to show you the entire way because, god damn, I just got fed up. But I'll show you the main meat of it. You can kind of guess how things are supposed to piece together. Here's the first attempt. We've already got our way in through the front entrance. We killed the guy in that little bunker. We can go into the bunker and we can pick up his weapon, but we don't really need it, obviously. We can then go into this barracks and kill a guy in here. We do need to kill him because he can see us through the windows whenever we sort of make our way further onwards. Inside the barracks. Um, on the other side of the fence is um, a bunch of entrances to places, so we uh, kind of want to be going there. We scamper around. Okay, we've got. Uh, oh, we've got a camera. Let's take that out. Okay, hold. Wait. Hold on. What, what? What happened there? Although I can't be 100% certain about it, I think the guy we killed in the barracks respawned, saw us through the window and then triggered the alarm which was inside that barracks. So, uh, yeah, should avoid there from now on. Let's try a second approach. This time we've gone in the scaffolding way that we'd gone before, and instead of going to the right, we're going to go to the left hand side. Now usually when I run down this I get spotted by the guy in the central tower, but if we keep an eye on him and just have a look at his uh, patrol, we can manage to skip past. This large warehouse in front of us is where the actual tank workshop itself is. This is where Anya said that the, um, the map computer and things were held, which happened to be not the case. down here and we can go in the side entrance, taking out the camera of course. In through the door and we've got a computer and this will switch off all of the cameras and this is actually pretty useful. Uh, this is something that you absolutely have to do if you try to take the secondary approach. Having a little bit of a poke about, we've got a couple of main guns on the floor and two tanks inside. Not really doing anything, there's not really much in here to find, there's nothing to pick up. Little thing to point out is that that door at the end isn't actually open, it's just that because we're so far away the level of detail just completely removes the object. Confused me for a little bit, but here we are. So let's get back out and we're going to try for this barracks building over here. It's got a lovely red cross symbol here, so I think we know what's going to be inside. Oh, 
baby daddy needs his medicine. Something else in the barracks, so let's get out. Um, down this other side, we've got another gateway. Once we've unlocked that, takes us into another section of the, it was the annex building that we saw earlier from the ridge. It is actually a power generator room. Once we get inside, we'll have a look at that. Oh, oh no, we've got company. Oh shit, I'm out of ammo. Uh, uh. Oh no, this is this is going to be a lot of trouble. Uh, well, we might as well have a look around while we're still here. Turning off the alarm is not really going to help us all that much. We. When we get down to the bottom of the ladder, we can hit this console and we can turn on the generator. At first I thought this was maybe a remnant of a, sort of an objective that they removed or something, because there seemed to be no particular purpose to it. And we'll see why it's actually something um, we need to do later on. Back out and oh shit, we got picked up by a camera somewhere. And at this point, I pretty much just abandoned all hope of finishing this particular run, so I'll just have a run over here and uh, oh shit, an APC and a tank. Let's rewind time a bit and go back to the bunker. Got that guy in here. You remember we shot him from the ridge and it uh, appeared to spook all of the other guards. Let's find out why. Once we kill him, there turns out to be an actual camera sitting over here. Uh, so there's no real way to kill him without obviously having to take out the camera first. And sometimes when you shoot the camera, the guys in the central tower can see that. But regardless, we've already kind of fucked things up for ourselves. The APC is already out and the tank is slowly making its way there. A fresh one has actually spawned inside the warehouse. The two stationary ones are still there. This is a third one that's just appeared out of nowhere. It's going to make its way out. It's got a very long shooting range, so, uh, yeah. Only for us, they're fighting the law, and the law wins. So let's go inside the bunker area here. Um, nothing behind there, and we've got a switch over here. And this is where the power generator actually comes into play. If we hit the switch, we can't open the main door into the bunker because the power isn't on. Here's a small snip from another aborted run, which I did. We've got the camera switched off, and the guy's just looking down the hole. And we can stab him in the arse. Ah! Lovely. And you can see why I didn't bother to actually do this run properly, because going through the effort of getting in, getting to the, the generator room, switching it on, and coming all the way back here without being seen, it's just really not worth it when we can just go in the back entrance way. Alright, that's enough of the second base, let's move on to actually finishing the level. If we check the map computer, we can actually see a very overbright picture of where we are. Looking at the objectives, we can see that we're half done. There's not long left in the video, so we've actually got not a lot left to do. We just have to get rid of the SAM site and then go into the radar base and finally to the extraction zone for, well, extraction. We'll speed that crap up because there's a lot of running around this base. up over the hill and there is the SAM site. It has absolutely no people around actually guarding it, it's just hanging out there doing nothing. Well, of course if you've been a bad boy with pastries, as you can see here I set off the alarm in the second base, got a tank and the APC roaming around. If we make our way over to the SAM site you see we've got ourselves a friend. 
wasn't as bad as it seems. We can just basically skirt around behind it and it's not a problem. But since we've been good boys, there's no one here to faff about. The map shows that there's no men roaming around. Stick the homing beacon on the back and get to a very safe distance. Incoming airstrike. Ooh. And after we've done that, we've got another bite of calm chatter to deal with. Anya says that they found Preboy. He's um, aboard a train and uh, they're just sort of tracking him. It's our job now at this point to intercept him. And before we do that, we need to turn off the radar dome thingamajig and then get in the helicopter. She tells us that Captain Harson has some warm clothing and food for us, but no bath. To which David has a bit of a whinge, but who cares about him? You might have noticed me trying to track the jet as it was flying along. Here, if we follow it on the actual map computer itself, we can see that it goes over here and then, unfortunately, it just flies directly into where the, the camera clipping plane is and it's kind of impossible to track after that. I've never been able to figure out where it goes. But this particular bit of test footage also pointed out something else to me that I'd missed. You can hear me getting shot at during this whole kerfuffle, which really shouldn't be happening because there's no one around. And it turns out that there actually are. There's three guys who've spawned whenever the, the jet flew past. Having another look at that, you can see that as soon as the jet is spawned, they uh, appear over there and start running towards it. If we wait long enough, they end up running towards the rear end of the SAM site. And if we double back, we get to see that they are all punched up in one place. And you can just take them out with a couple of shots. And they all collapse into a big, lovely man pile. So, time to wrap this level up. Let's just get all this stuff done with. Heading off to the radar dome. There's two guys roaming around. Well, one of them's roaming around the outside and another guy just kind of hangs inside the barracks for a while. Stop Inside the radar dome, there's no one else here. We just gotta switch to hit, and that's it. <gasps> that switched off the air defenses, and if we exit out of the base. You can see that the helicopters are already landed. We've got some um, marker flare things that have gone off. I don't know if that was for the helicopter to land at or it's sort of to attract our attention, but regardless, that's where we're headed. Oh, it appears the pilot's missing. Uh, okay. Well, let's just jump in anyway and we'll wait for him to turn up. Oh well, I'll see you next time. Oh god. Oh god, it's flying by itself. Ah! Oh no, we're gonna crash into the mountain! <laughs>